Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about this video that a family vlogger channel called The Can Family uploaded recently. In this video, they talk about their newborn baby being deaf. They have a couple other videos about the baby's hearing, but this one is like straight up, our newborn baby is deaf. And I have some feelings on it. To the Can family, you very likely don't know me. So, hi, my name is Ricky. I'm deaf. I grew up mainstreamed. I've been on YouTube for over a decade, and for the majority of that decade, I have been talking about being mainstreamed, accessibility, and so on and so forth. So, after I saw your video, I did leave you a comment, but I also wanted to make a video about it for you and other families that will probably be going through the same thing before, now, and in the future. The first thing I want to get out of the way is just say that you have nothing to worry about and your son will be okay. I promise. Now, I will say that the video worried me in the beginning before I even watched it because the thumbnail of it is them looking really sad. And I just went, oh God, it's gonna be another one of those videos where everybody's gonna be so sad that the baby's deaf, it's the end of the world, da da da. But when I watched the actual video, I was actually pleasantly surprised. There were a few things that made me go, oh, I wish that wasn't being said. But for the most part, I was pleasantly surprised and I was even more pleasantly surprised by the comment section. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, of course, with the thumbnail, the creator half of me understands why there's a clickbait thumbnail. I get it. But the deaf half of me doesn't sit well. It doesn't sit well with me because it further, it just keeps the idea going. It continues the stigma. It supports the stigma that being deaf is the end of the world. You know? But again, I was pleasantly surprised by the video. While they did have some concerns, it also seemed like, especially after they were reading some of the comments, that they were starting to realize, yeah, this isn't a, a bad thing. In this video, they talk about that they're going through the process of getting him hearing aids right now and also possibly in the future, getting him cochlear implants. And yes, the cochlear implant debate is a whole lot of controversy. One thing that they're talking about is that they were hoping that they were wanting to give him these things, these assistive tools so that he will thrive. First, I wanna say that hearing aids and cochlear implants are not bad things in themselves. They are assistive tools. I have plenty of deaf friends who have cochlear implants and it's completely valid. And I have friends with hearing aids and I'm currently in the process of getting them real ones. Somewhere down the line in the future, it's a very long process. So I'm not anti any of these things and a lot of deaf people aren't anti any of these things. It's anti the stigma or whatever, the misconception that these things are instant cures and they will fix everything. And that without these things, you cannot thrive. And I wanna tell you, your child, Neo, is going to thrive regardless. You also talk about how you want him to be verbal. Hi, I'm verbal, okay? I grew up mainstream. I grew up speaking English. I did not have access to the deaf community, which is something that I wanna talk about. My hearing dad and my oral deaf biological mother. That's the whole thing um, outside of it. I did not have access to ASL and stuff growing up. So I grew up speaking. I'm speaking in this video now, right? I'm fluent in English and I'm basic conversational in ASL. But your child is going to thrive regardless. The hearing aids on the cochlear implants are not requirements to thrive. So please don't worry about that, okay? Please don't be worried about that. Because all that does is that makes everybody else that's going to be worried about it. And then everybody's like, oh my god, if my child doesn't have this, something bad is going to happen. If he speaks only, if he knows ASL only, if he knows both even, he will thrive. So please don't worry about that. At one point, you were talking about the fact that, hey, now he can do sports and he can go swimming, stuff like that. He can do sports and he can go swimming regardless. Don't go swimming with the cochlear implant though. Or hearing aids. That would be bad. Don't do that. <laughs> but... He can do those things regardless. We have deaf athletes that don't even wear assisted devices. Some do, some don't. We have musicians even. Does your son want to be a musician when he grows up? Don't worry about it. He's got it. We got deaf musicians, hearing aids, cochlear implants, none of them. If he wants to do that, he's going to be just fine. Don't worry about that. With the right resources, with the right deaf friendly resources, it's not going to be a problem. One thing I really liked was that even though they were talking about hearing aids and cochlear implants, they still asked about sign language. They're like, I want my kid to know sign language too even. I think that would be great. There was also a little bit of a back and forth between the two. Like if he only knows ASL, then he's gonna be delayed in speech or whatever. 
with the right resources, you're not gonna have to worry about that. Considering the fact that there are audiologists and doctors out there that are like, no, 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 no sign language, no, 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 not all of them, but you know, it, it is, it is, oralism is strong in the medical industry and ableism is strong in the medical industry. But I just, I just like the fact that they brought it up not only in private, but in public. So I appreciate that. I do recommend, I don't know how y'all are gonna be learning this. I do recommend learning from a deaf teacher and I also recommend your te your children learn from deaf teachers. I don't know where you live. I know you live in the States. I don't know where you live, like what state and city and whatnot, but I will have resources for you down below. There's a, a great deaf teacher, Bill Vikers, aka lifeprint.com. A lot of people use them, I use them. He's great. I'll have that down below, you check that out. But you definitely wanna learn from a deaf teacher. That's really, really best because obviously they've grown up using it. They know the mannerisms behind it because ASL is not just, oh, you're gonna move your hands, right? There's c cultural stuff behind it and there's your facial expressions and everything like that. So highly recommend deaf teacher. And definitely go with videos or in person or live stream or Zoom calls, you know. Don't go to books because it's just a flat image. ASL is not a flat image though. So if you're going to any books, they're, they're good for like last resort things, but you want video dictionaries and stuff like that. Again, down below. Don't worry about it, I got you. I used to use books when I was younger to try to learn about myself and it didn't work out so well because I was like, how do you, how do you do this? I don't get it. So definitely easier with video. There was another point in the video where they were talking about how, what was it that they were saying exactly? I can't remember exactly what I said, but when I wrote the comment, I said he can be raised just like your daughter. It's not like you have to other your child, right? They don't need to be, othered and be like treated completely differently. Raise them the same, it's gonna be fine. Obviously one will need more accommodation than the other, but it's not gonna be that much more difficult and it doesn't need to be some big thing. I mean, this is what I said in the comment. He could be raised just like your daughter being deaf doesn't mean he has to be othered. It's becoming an issue that mainstream hearing society keeps trying to push us in a corner and act like we're not normal people. And that is what causes the inaccessibility, which is something you two are going to have to fight for when he starts school, etc. Which yeah, brings me to this. Another thing that I would recommend, please caption your videos. Since especially if, if Neo is going to be watching this in the future, captions are gonna be helpful. The automatic captions are really not that great. They've improved a lot, but they're still not as accessible as they need to be because accessibility and captions is not just words. It's also the grammar, the speed, etc. Plus, from what I can tell in the comments, you have a very large disabled, a large deaf audience. I read a lot of comments from deaf people and they're like, I, I watch your videos. So because later in life, you're very likely going to be fighting for Neo's accessibility because I'm sure that's gonna show up somewhere down the road because even with assistive tools, we still need accommodations like ASL interpreters and captions, etc., etc. because nothing is 100% a cure. Like if you have assistive device, it's not a cure. So since you will keep on going with this journey and you're gonna have a deaf audience that you currently have and probably a deaf audience in the future, more coming in, highly recommend captioning your videos or getting your videos captions anyway. Lots of resources on that. I'll help you out, got them down below. And with all that talk about accessibility, captions, interpreters, da da da, whatever he uses down the road, definitely start reading up on the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's gonna help you out a lot. One thing I was so pleasantly surprised by, which again, is why I was like, ugh, as a thumbnail, but then when you watch the video, it's like, you're pleasantly surprised, at least I was, when uh, the husband was saying, you know, my family was asking, why aren't you sad about the fact that he's deaf, you know, because a, a lot of people get very, very sad and I'd like to stay in the world, but he's like, why would I be sad about it? Like, okay. And I like that they were announcing that out to the public. I feel like that's a breath of fresh air of what I see from other people that have deaf kids, whether it's on YouTube, I see it on Facebook and on Twitter and in real life even, right? Even just recently there was a, a conversation on Twitter about how somebody was just like, oh my God, my child's deaf, ah, you know? People are always like, I wouldn't want a deaf child, I don't want a disabled child, da, da, da. So seeing that, I was like, damn. And you were talking about how you would treat your son like a superhero. The original Hawkeye is deaf. I don't think he was deaf from the very beginning, but he is deaf now at least. So go get some Hawkeye stuff. 
Your, your son's gonna be like a superhero? Also, let him know about Hawkeye. Lauren Ridloff also is a Marvel person. She's in the new Returnals and she also plays a character on The Walking Dead. So I don't know if she has any like memorabilia merchandise out in regards to that. But hey, let him know about that. I mean, The Walking Dead is a little scary for a newborn. Maybe wait on that later. You know, don't, don't, don't scare the guy. Don't scare the kid. But Hawkeye. There's also Super Deffy. Super Deffy is like the like the kids show type of thing. So I uh, definitely look him up. But Hawkeye, yeah. But yeah, definitely glad that it was a more positive feeling in the video. I mean, it, it, it's very good to have that sort of positivity with that because <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I, I admittedly I hated being deaf, but in my defense, uh, I was pretty much the only deaf person I knew because I don't have a great relationship with my uh, mother. I didn't have access to deaf community, other deaf people, language, etc., etc. So it was very, very isolating and the inaccessibility made it very isolating. So yeah. And then here's where the biggest part I think of the video is where a lot of us deaf people who are watching on, on Twitter, we were talking about on deaf Twitter, we were like using the word fix, fixing, fixable. Your child is not broken. Your child is just deaf and the deafness is not going to be fixable. Even with hearing aids, with a coker and a plant, at the end of the day, your child is still deaf. He, he doesn't need fixing and I whether when the coker implant when the hearing aids are on uh, he, he's gonna be deaf when they're off still deaf and that's okay doesn't need to be fixable doesn't need fixing so don't worry about that and since you already have a deaf audience when you're saying that type of stuff and your deaf audience is watching that kind of makes us feel like oh that's uh, oh, okay, you know, it's, uh, it sucks. So with that all being said, a couple of things I want to bring up uh, for you trying to navigate this whole thing, because I, I'm imagining that you two, you grew up hearing all your lives, obviously, and you know, might be the very first deaf person that you've ever known. I mean, maybe, maybe you come across deaf people in passing because it's not like we're a totally rare species or anything, but <laughs> you know. Uh, he's gonna be the first deaf person that you're really gonna get to know. So I'm not blaming you for being confused and being like, oh my God, what do I do? Do I do this? Do we go with the devices? Da, 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 da. I'm not faulting you for that. I don't blame, it's, that's normal. Especially when in the medical industry and even just non-medical mainstream society, everybody's pushing deaf bad, get things, right? Like it's just being, that's like pushed front and center all the time. Deaf people get it all the time, you know? Like always questions, I still get questions. Why don't you get cochlear implants? Why don't you get hearing aids? Which again, not bad things, but it's like, yeah, we, we know about this. You know what? Like that, that's our business, right? But what I do want to recommend is not only just going to your audiologist, uh, to other doctors, but find deaf people, whether it's in person. Again, I don't know where you live. If somebody tells me in the comments, I, I can help you out with that. I'm sure other people would help you out with that. But also, you know, talking on the internet, deaf Twitter, deaf Facebook, deaf YouTube, deaf Instagram, deaf TikTok. You know, we're, we're rising up on the social platforms and bringing more awareness years and years and years now and to come. Right, so we got so many resources, we got so many stories, whether it's deaf people with hearing aids, deaf people who grew up mainstream, deaf people who grew up culturally in deaf culture, or deaf people with cochlear implants, especially deaf people with cochlear implants, because I think you would benefit a lot from just knowing their experiences. Whether it's deaf people who got them later on in life or whether they, especially when they had them when they were very young. Because yes, there is that controversy of deaf children being implanted and that's a conversation we can have all day. At the end of the day, I and nobody else can force you or, and ultimately tell you what to do. But I do highly encourage you to not just talk to audiologists about it because yes, they're gonna know all the medical stuff, the sciencey stuff, but I don't think it's gonna hurt to talk to deaf people themselves about it. Not just one person, you know, go to a couple of people. There's lots of deaf people that are very happy with their cochlear implants. Some that are like, ah, just talk to everyone. Well, you probably can't talk to everyone. That's probably gonna be a lot of people. You probably don't have time, but just talk to some people. I'm saying that, I'm recommending that to, to talk to a whole bunch of us so we can continue to show you that being deaf in itself is not bad. It's not deaf bad, you know? It, uh, we, we thrive a lot. We have lots of great careers, lots of great lives, friends, families, whether, you know, it's parents that are part of the family or when these deaf, when other deaf people have had kids. 
even. Or thriving. Deafness in itself is not bad. Does it sometimes come with struggles? Yes. But majority of the time, that often comes because of inaccessibility and because of mainstream hearing society making that in incredibly difficult for us at times. But generally, it's just not a bad thing. As long as there is a good support system, great resources, you and your child and the sister will be fine. And I'm so pleasantly surprised by the comments because normally when I see these videos or Twitter threads or Facebook posts, everyone seems to be like anti sign language and you know, all of that. But everybody, so many people are like either I'm deaf or I'm hearing or you know what, from everybody, whether deaf or hearing was like, you know what, go with ASL as well. If you're gonna go verbal, go with ASL as well. Give them all the resources. There's nothing bad about being ASL only. Da, 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 da. And I was like, damn. I don't know. I was very happy seeing that. If if you need anything, because y'all seem like very nice people, huh? You know, I enjoyed seeing the personality uh, in that video. I don't know if you're gonna watch this, but if you happen to, you know, uh, my email is down below, whatever, um, we could connect. And like I said, I'll help you out. And I can point you to some of my friends who have better experiences with certain things, obviously, because I'm not the only person that needs to be talking to you, no. Because obviously my experience is not the same as everybody's. So, but you know, I'd, I'd love to help you out. Again, consider captioning your videos because I think it's gonna be a great help, not only to you to grow your channel, but for everyone else. Because when everything is accessible, more people come in. Cool. Uh, I think I covered everything, all of my feelings on that. I'm, I'm very happy with how that turned out. If you've seen the video, if you watch this family, let me know what you thought uh, down below. And I will see you later.